and we have a very important announcement that we are going to make. And with that, I want to bring in our chief meteorologist, uh, Jonathan Porter. John, and I know we're not, we're only in February, but we do want to make this special announcement about the upcoming hurricane season. Bernie, that's right. AccuWeather's uh, long-range expert team here is really sounding the alarm bells about what this upcoming hurricane season could become in terms of making it a supercharged season with the risks for many storms with some of these factors coming together. Yeah, let's talk about the factors. You know what? Whenever we're talking about the hurricane season, we always start with water temperatures here, mm. John. And l l here we are off the East Coast, but that's not where we're necessarily concerned with. We're concerned about what we call the MDR, the major development region of the Atlantic Basin here. And these are all water temperatures, lots of yellows, lots of reds. And let's talk about the MDR, why that's, this is so significant. Well, this is the part of the Atlantic Ocean that we look at because 80% of the storms that become tropical storms or hurricanes originate in this main development region just off the coast of Africa, all the way westbound into the Caribbean. And take a look at these differences from historic average in the oranges and reds, zero to five degrees Fahrenheit above average, five to 10 in the dark red. This is a lot of red and one of the main reasons we have very serious concerns. The water is so warm already. Typically, the water is about as warm as it is in mid-July. Here we are toward the end of February. That's a big concern. And, you know, John, when you look at the history, and we can go back with the history, it, it's kind of uh, un unprecedented when you go all the way back. Now, this is a lot of information on the graph, but I think w you could really... It's a lot warmer than it should be and a lot warmer than it was uh, historically. Sure was. And take a look at it. When you look at the b numbers here, each of these little bar graphs is a rep or each of these bars is representative of a year. Everything that's in orange are temperatures above the historic average water temperatures in that main development region. And look at how much this year stands out here at the end. It's almost 65% uh, higher in terms of the average temperature than the next uh, closest year, which you go back to 2002 to get that. So that shows you just the magnitude of the warmth of that water in the Atlantic Ocean due to a warming atmosphere. We've talked about how oceans hold much of that, can hold a lot of that heat, and also the El Nino pattern that we've been in. Those are conspiring to really cause these temperatures to be as high as they are. You know, John, but it's not just water temperatures. We often also we talk about water temperatures and wind shear. Now, it's hard to talk about wind shear this far in advance on a day to day basis. But we do have some things that we look at. Last year, for an example, we had the El Nino, the warming of the equatorial waters in the eastern Pacific. And because of that, the wind shear was a lot stronger across the Atlantic, and that's actually, in a way, counteracted the uh, warmer water. Yes, it does, and that's why we had that, we were talking about that big balance last year. Sometimes those disruptive winds, just as, storm, as soon as a tropical storm gets going, it can tend to cause the thunderstorms that are part of the storm to be dispersed a bit and not intensify. So that can put a cap on how many hurricanes you get. It didn't last year because that water was so warm. But here's the problem. We feel pretty confidently that we're going into the opposite phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Not an El Nino, but a La, Nina, a La Nina. Explain. That's right. So what we'll be looking for is cooler waters in the Pacific off the coast of South America. And you might say, well, John, that's the Pacific. You're talking about the Atlantic. Actually, the changes in the water and the weather, the jet stream configurations all across the world and much of the world as a result of this phenomena. And when this happens, when you go from a, into a La Nina pattern, that's when you have less of those changing wind speeds, less of those disruptive winds in the atmosphere. So you end up with the risk for more hurricane activity. That's why we're concerned with the uh, developing La Nina and that warm water. All right, let's put it all in the forecast, John. And this is what your team came up with here. And uh, unfortunately, I, I, I must say the news isn't good. No, it's not good. And of course, uh, the, the, a couple of the main threats and the risks here is, first of all, the warm water and entering into a La Nina pattern, we expect an above average nor number of named storms could be well above average, depending upon the strength of that La Nina. And there's also going to be, Bernie, with all that warm water, 
We've talked about this before, an elevated risk of storms to rapidly intensify, quickly gain wind intensity, and that of course can lead to stronger impacts at landfall, especially when that happens close to, co close to the coast. There will also be the risk, an elevated risk for major hurricanes. Those are uh, Cat 3 or higher on the Saffir Simpson wind scale. And one thing I want to highlight here is uh, there will be, a, we think, a greater risk for landfalls in Texas and Louisiana. Texas and Louisiana have not been areas that have been targets of hurricanes in recent years. We think that may change this year as well. So a lot to be watching and be concerned about. A lot of this is going to depend on just how strong that La Nina comes on as we head into the, uh, into the peak of the hurricane season. We'll be following that very closely. We're coming up on the break really quickly, John. Also, the season could start early and end late, right? Sure could. Whenever you have warm water, you got to watch, as you always say, Bernie, watch those upper lows that yes. develop closer to the United States coastline. Early season storms, a threat again this year. All right, we're giving you advance notes on the upcoming hurricane season. AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist Jonathan Porter. John, thanks for joining us.